Welcome to Youth in Action. Today we have Raymond Odhiambo, a jack of all trades. I can't even begin introducing him. So, Raymond, can you tell us about yourself? My name is Raymond Odhiambo, a resident of Kisumu, a young person, uh, a father, and an uh, artist. So, I reside at Dunga, and uh, I'm here as the founder of Oof Arts Kisumu. Uh, this is a group of young people who are innovative, who are coming up with uh, different creative things uh, to suit the economy. So what we do here is to uh, physically harvest water hyacinth from the lake and uh, other waste product. We have plastics, we have uh, used clothes, we have car tires that finds their ways to the lake, maybe through floods. You know, Kisumu is known for flooding, or let me say West Kenya, a region is known for flooding. So anything can find its way to the lake. So we collect these uh, weeds together and other waste products, we sort them together and create meaningful things out of them. In uh, various circumstances, we've been having people communicating to, to actually remove the uh, weeds out of the lake, but how do we make sure that we uh, make use of them or they don't go back to the lake? So. That is where Oof Arts come in and complete the cycle of uh, completely working on the things that have been removed from the lake and creating meaningful out of it. So far, we've, uh, we are having a group of both young female and uh, male that is supporting this uh, Oof Arts uh, project. And we have uh, done a lot of things since 2016 together. And we are hopefully moving towards a higher level of creating employment to young people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what kind of things do you make out of this waste product? So uh, we, we make tables, we make uh, flower vases out of it, uh, we make seats, uh, designer seats, not just normal seats, but we think and create something that would really suit the market, that will really be appealing to those who want to buy, and even to ourselves. We are also the consumers of such things. Uh, we are making uh, wall mirrors, we are making uh, uh, coffee tables, we are making a lot of things. I will not mention all of them today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Yeah. So what inspired you to do this? Actually, um, the environment that I live in, I live in Dunga, mm -hmm. next to Lake Victoria. We love Lake Victoria so much, and people come from all over the world to come and observe how Lake Victoria is beautiful. But what amazed us is the level of dumping in Lake Victoria. So. Uh, I used to have inspiration about how we can manage waste products and I have a passion for it. So we started seeing how Lake Victoria is becoming a hazard to even the aquatic lives and even to the fish that we are feeding on. That's why we came back with a motto, bring back Lake Victoria to suit uh, the support of cleaning Lake Victoria. So that is our main drive. But I know the more we are doing for Lake Victoria, we have noticed slum areas and now we are coming up with a, a general conservation in, of environment. Mm -hmm. Yes. You must have started somewhere, right? Sure. When did you start this? Uh, Oof Arts uh, started way back in 2016, but uh, at that level we were a little bit uh, low. I mean we started low production, we started with the flower vases. Mm -hmm. So we started with a small shop just uh, making flower vases and people were wondering what we were doing with old clothes and cement and we kept on uh, training uh, uh, some few young people that came by that time now that I had the skill as the founder so I started engaging young people how to make flower vases and now reserve the soil because we've used the soil so much until nowadays we, we are left with just a portion so we were encouraging people not to a used soil to make pots. We can equally have the beauty of other pots, but we make use of old clothes than using soil to make pots. So we started small and then we grew to 2021 20, is when we started commercial business. 
where we are in Milimani. We used to have a small shop besides the road in Dunga where we used to do street business. What I mean here by street business is that people come and buy from you. Mm -hmm. They do not know the value of what they are carrying away. They do not know how they are made. So when we came to commercial business, we got uh, support from Winam Capital, who now assisted us in uh, having a space in Milimani as our showroom and also working space. So this is uh, something that really encouraged us to continue working more. So as per now, I can say that uh, the Oof Arts is now stronger from this year, January, where we got the space uh, to do commercial business. In your journey, how has the community received At first, it was, it was a nightmare to them. Uh, people were wondering what I was doing uh, with the old clothes, what I was doing with the hyacinth. So some of them even uh, were thinking that we were just young people that are creating attention. <clears throat> but actually, we had a vision for this, and we had a plan that one day it will materialize to become something that is acceptable, something that people would uh, uh, sit down and discuss, something that if mentioned, people will, it will keep people awake. So when we started small, we, we used to make flower vases, and we tell people to now use the flower vases that are made from recycling and leave the pots for soil conservation. Others will still go for the other ones for, for soil. But when we uh, aligned the benefits, now people started reverting to uh, flower pots that are made through our creativity. Reason being, uh, even their stability, uh, their style, the uniqueness, and even the issue of conserving the environment made them so appealing until now people have adopted them instead of the other pots that are uh, wasting them. Uh, I mean, uh, uses a lot of soil and wasting our environment. Sure. So how do you balance your work as uh, being in the Red Cross with this one? Okay, uh, being in Red Cross, uh, I, I, want, I must say that it has been a long journey. I've been in Red Cross for the last eight good years. As a student from school, now I joined to support the society. Red Cross is a home for volunteers. It's a voluntary work until one day you decide, no, I don't want to give my service to Red Cross. But once you taste the importance of supporting the community, you'll never quit something that when you start that there's no quitting. So uh, as a volunteer in Red Cross, I believe that even if I do other jobs, I can still volunteer with the resources that I've collected to support young people. Because even in Red Cross, I'm the sole donor of Red Cross. As a community, you and I, you're the person who is supporting the other communities that are vulnerable. So through the collection of, uh, uh, of what we have, we can put them together and support the society. So it's never a job that uh, somebody is going to say that I'm going to work for Red Cross. So I have to look for a way that I can also get my own resources and also support Red Cross Society. So going the other side uh, to do the community work also creates a very big importance in my life because I learn how community behave, vulnerability that are maybe within the community. So those are some of the uh, stabilizers in my business that enable me to reach the community easily and access the raw materials that I want. Also invite them to come and work for something that can put uh, food on their table. Where do you source your material? Uh, generally, uh, for now, we are peeling. We have uh, appeal drives for materials, especially for car tires. They are all over in the city and people do not know what to do with them. So we had a peel poster for people to dump in um, their material at we launch. Uh, where we are situated in Milimani. So people have been responding positively. In the olden days, we used to to buy, and it was quite expensive for us because we are just a starter. It used to be very difficult for us to even get uh, a number of tires to, to work on a seat. So uh, I must say that people have responded, and people are bringing car tires, motorcycle tires, and even kids nowadays identify our group with the, with the car tires. When they see they just bring the tires, you can pick this one. So we are moving to a greater height of people now started accepting that they need to bring their dams here. Mm. Yeah. So where do you get your clientele and uh, what is your market? Um, our clients majorly are schools because once we get the tires, they, may, they might be too much for, for artwork alone. So we go and create meaningful uh, playgrounds for kids in school. Uh, 
those ones we just do to support the schools. We've done like three schools for now, just uh, creating uh, playgrounds where they can now hang out with the tires and play around with the painted tires with different texture, colors. Uh, another big market for us is uh, pubs. Majorly pubs really like things that are unique that would attract customers. We have hotels, uh, we have recreational centers, we have uh, malls, uh, like uh, Lake Basin Mall, we have a great support from them. They have been buying from us, and even other places, and even individuals are uh, part of our targets. And uh, in terms of support, yeah. uh, have you uh, have any philanthropists ar ar approached you and uh, want to support your work? Yes, of course. Uh, we've received, uh, I can say, our first and uh, eye-opening support that we've received, maybe in, not in terms of monetary value, but in terms of, uh, uh, I can say, in terms of space support. We got a, a, a communication from Winam Capital. Winam Capital is just a, a business venture that uh, incubates young SMEs to grow their business and they also provide uh, expertise on how to, to carry out your business. So when they got us from the street Dunga, doing street business. We, uh, we talked, we had a, a long conversation with them. They had to convince me that they can provide me a space. I was so reluctant because it's not very easy to find such people that wants to encourage you, wants to expand you and one, two, three. So we had a long conversation with them and they agreed to bring me in Milimani, where I am now, and give me space and give me um, a little bit of technical uh, expertise to support my business. So now I moved from street business to commercial business where I can meet investors. I can go out there and look for customers and have even physical address. Because the other shop looked like a briefcase office. No, no one would want to come and spend in that office. But here we can have a conversation on how we can improve our business. We can have even more employees coming over because there is a space. Yeah. And what challenges have you encountered doing this work? Okay, uh, I know when rubber meets the road, there must be tire bus, there must be other issues that comes. Uh, I can say that uh, for the first time, the big hit this year is COVID-19. Actually, COVID-19 just uh, brought us to the rock bottom, but we are trying to come up with uh, different mechanisms of surviving. We have created so many artwork that are lovable. People love them, but there was no money to buy them. People opted for basic things that can make them survive other than once we consider this as once because some some of the people were saying that uh, they rather buy food than buying luxuries so uh, the other uh, problem that we have is uh, finances for example now we are just depending on ourselves the oof art groups we just coming up and contributing towards the support of our business we don't have anybody who is supporting us for now, uh, we also plow back. Every profit that we have made from the business, we just try to use a little of it and make sure that we plow back so that we, we have more creation of other things. So it's never been easy, but we, we know at the end we'll see the light. Sure. And how do you plan to sustain your business in the long run? We have different mechanisms that we have put in place. Now that uh, our business is gender inclusive, we want our people to reach a certain level where they are self-independent. And we all, always teach them on how they can also start their own business, not only depending on the group that is already existing. So we have a plan that in future, the group that we are hosting, hosting now can be able to teach other people so that we expand the oof arts. Not just in Kisumu, but we can have oof arts in Mombasa in Nairobi and even abroad, where we can now have open market to sell outside and even to appreciate the investors who will join us in Kenya. The other thing we want to uh, teach people, uh, that is our future objective, we want to teach people how to professionally manage uh, waste. Like in Kenya for now, you see how waste is being managed. Uh, we have one bin at the center and everything that is a waste is put in one bin and it's collected and dumped in the same place. 
So we want to come up with uh, different mechan mechanisms on how we can handle waste. If it's a bin for metals, we have to put it in metal. We have a bin for plastics and then general waste that can decompose, it's okay to decompose them at the right place. So uh, we have a vision as UF Arts to come up with something like an app that will be having people in different estates and we monitor them every day and we go and collect those that they have uh, dumped in the right places and also appreciate them with a token. And now we, have, we can have partnership with the different companies because I know we cannot consume everything. Uh, everything that they contribute in, in those dumps might be helpful in some organization, in some factories, in some companies. So we can negotiate with them so that they also buy the idea of collecting waste from the bins that they can use. So another one, we are also empowering young girls. For example, if you look at uh, Lake Region, uh, there are issues that arose in terms of uh, uh, young women exchanging sex with fish. We are talking about uh, unemployed young women along the lake and they become so much vulnerable. So UF Arts gave uh, them an opportunity to come and uh, uh, work, actually come and work for 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 food because uh, if you look at the percentage of groups that we have now some of them were not able to put food on the table i'm not just talking about food you can buy bread and milk and put it there i'm talking about good food well balanced diet somebody can eat and appreciate the day so uh, we are encouraging them to do meaningful things to create wealth in a accepted way so that we reduce cases of HIV uh, along the lake and also we encourage young, uh, young people to be empowered. So in terms of skill development, we have a vision with our team. Uh, we are training people according to their skill capacity, areas that they are interested in. You can't be interested in arts, but the capacity at which you can grow in arts may not allow you, but you are interested in something else that you can do. So we also empower them to do what they feel it's right for them. Uh, an Englishman puts it in this way, liking what you do is freedom, but doing what you like is happiness. So they will choose happiness at times of freedom because of what they want to do. So we encourage everybody that is willing to support, even those young girls or young people that are working from here, to do so because this is the right time for them. What about, uh, for example, five years to come? Yes. What do you aim to achieve then? Uh, we, we want to have a policy as a group, and I, I know if the county and the national government adopts it, a policy that will allow even uh, arts. I know CBC is coming in, but we are talking about uh, some policies that will support uh, the, 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 the formal employment so that they, they get good funds so that they grow their business. Because uh, if you look at now the employment rate, uh, the government can only support but a few people. But what about the group of people that are left in the informal sectors? Of course, we appreciate that we need to go to school. But the importance of going to school is to have skills. So we cannot always knock at the government offices looking for job while we have the skills to expand on our own. So that's why we are coming up with uh, some policies that will support uh, um, informal sectors to grow and also to to be respected because when people feel about this work they look at it as a dirty work and of course it's not dirty as I think money is never dirty when you get money out of something it's always clean so you're also thinking about developing skilled young girls and boys at their youth age so that they come out uh, uh, sprouting with different types of skills from arts and even other areas that they would feel comfortable with them. Sure. And uh, in this light, uh, what is your call to the young people? Uh, uh, time takes each and every time. Uh, everything has a season. As a young person and you are seated at home, uh, looking at your papers, thinking about employment, I know it might not be the right time for you to be employed. But I'm just telling that young people that are there, uh, who has finished university, who has skills, please come out and share your skills. This is the right time. 
there's no other time that you'll be waiting for. Just fold your sleeves. Do not choose job now because whatever we have, we'll deal with whatever we have, not whatever we wish we would have. So come out and support any other business that you'll feel can support you. Go to work because employment is also not never promising. You can have employment, but tomorrow there's no funds you sent home. So go to work, but open a shop somewhere. Have a business that brings income. Uh, get employed, but think about business that will run you throughout the life. Because it's never enough also. You can be earning well, but it's never enough. So you must have side hustle. But to us, who are in a, an employment sector, I mean, I mean a, a informal sector, we treat this as our first and our best employment. Yes. So we really encourage them to work, work and continue working. Yes. Hey, I am already recruited. Doing what you like is freedom and liking what you do is happiness. What do you have that out there? What is your skill? What do you love? Go do it and start immediately to manage your happiness. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. This is the way to do it.